Hey guys, so this video I'm going to show you how you can do texture packing inside of Blender using the compositor. Now there's a lot of different software you can do this. We're not going to talk about those ones in this video, but you can do it in things like Photoshop, GIMP, Krita, Substance Painter, Designer. There's a bunch of places you can do this, but Blender is not a bad experience. So if you don't have the other software, you know, you can certainly put it to use. Now, when you go to websites like Ambient CG, right, you download some materials or whatever the case, a lot of times these things come in with multiple files. Now texture packing in general, of course, is to save a little bit of memory usage by combining multiple textures together, all right? So that's the main purpose of it. Now how you combine these together can get a little bit intricate depending on what you're working on and how you set up your shaders. So if you ever played around with Unreal Engine or Unity, you'll know that a lot of times you have different kind of texture pack setups that you might utilize, such as like Unreal, you might be combining occlusion, roughness, and metallic together. But Unity you might be adding something like glossiness to your regular base color. So you'll have to do some packing at some point uh, sooner or later. So it's also uh, good to do this in Blender as well because it does save you a little bit of memory usage perhaps. No. So let's go ahead and just jump into this. Uh, everything's going to happen in the compositor for the most part. So we're going to go over there. We're going to check use nodes. You'll see we have this set up like so, right? Okay. So... We want to press Shift A and create an output viewer node. You'll see this happens. All right. These are actually not that important. We're not even going to utilize these for the most part. So I'm just going to put them over there out of the way. Viewer node is important though. Okay. And also we want to come down here and change this to the image editor. So we can look at the viewer node here. All right. This is kind of important. So click there, viewer node. All right. Now we're all set up. So here's the thing. Let's say... Uh, we can bring in images by pressing Shift A, creating uh, input texture. Oops, sorry, not texture. Input image, and we can open up any texture that we want this way. If you have multiple monitors or you uh, put Blender into a window and you have a file browser open, you can just drag and drop these over one at a time as well. All right, so let me just bring in a base color or an albedo. We'll take a look at that right here. Okay. So this is going to be hooked up to that image input, and we'll get this going. So uh, color images, right, they're made up of three channels usually, uh, a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. And these different uh, values of gray, basically, are kind of put back together mathematically to create all your colors that you see, whether it's red, green, blue, yellow, whatever the case, right? All right, with that out of the way, not everything you utilize for PBR materials is going to be a colored image. Some of them are gray. So therefore you can utilize those different channels, the red, green, and blue channels to pack textures together and place things inside of them, right? So in this case, let's go over alpha first. Let's say this is going to be a transparent material, all right? You can create your, like a lot of times when you download a material, it might be set up um, where you have an opacity texture that comes with it, like you download from Ambient CG. Uh, you can pack those into the base color or um, basically add it to the alpha channel. So what we're going to do is just do that real quick. So what we're looking for here, and of course they changed everything, so i got to go find it now. In the newer version of Blender here anyways. Looking for... We're looking for... Um, Hmm, color. It's in color, I guess. Okay, so we're looking for color and set alpha. Okay, so you see we have a color image input and an alpha input. So this will go into here, and this can be used as the alpha. Okay, we can plug it into here, and we'll see it does this number. So what we're looking at is, if we click here, this is RGB and alpha. This is just RGB, and this is alpha only. All right, so that's what we're seeing. That's what should be happening anyways. And so now we're basically, we've pre-multiplied the alpha. You can see down here in the image viewer, it's actually transparent here where the compositor it's not. Um, so it is actually transparent in those areas. Now, this is going to be a little bit tricky if you've never had to deal with this yet. That there is um, an alpha convert node here as well under color. So this alpha convert node will let you either use pre-multiplied alphas or two straight alphas. Sometimes this is important to use it straight if you're doing certain things like foliage, perhaps. Other times, you don't really need it. So uh, the alpha convert here is going to be utilized if you need it. 
So just keep that in mind. Uh, but once you've set up a node setup like this, you can go ahead and just save this out down here in the image viewer. And you would want to use the correct settings for whatever type of texture you're creating. In our case, we would want to make sure RGBA is checked, 8 bits fine, and we can just save this out as a new base color, basically. And so our texture would be packed, basically, at this point, where the alpha channel would be added to the, well, the opacity would be added to the alpha channel, potentially. So that's step one, right? That's dealing with alpha transparency. All right, so we'll get rid of that real quick. Now, instead of using, well, we'll go over these ones real quick. Let's see. We have, uh, we're going to combine the metalness, ambient occlusion, and the roughness. This is going to be for like an Unreal Engine setup, okay? So all we do is we drag those in. Here's AO. Here's roughness. And here's metal, uh, metallic or metalness, right? Little space bar that so I can see it a little bit better. But uh, we're going to press Shift A. We're going to do color. We're going to do a mix. And we're going to combine colors. Okay. And now you see we can just plug these into the appropriate channels. So this front one can go to the red channel, green channel, and then blue channel. Plug that in. You'll get some crazy color set up like this. Okay. So super useful so that you can combine those together. Save this image out now, right? In this case, once again, we can just use um, RGB 8-bit. Uh, we don't need an alpha channel necessarily. And then we can go ahead and save that. Now, there is a trick to this. Now, what we've, this would be creating is the occlusion roughness metallic map, right? Um, we could add an alpha channel to it and create the opacity on this channel as well if we wanted to. So we'd have an ORMA, basically. Uh, it's just something to keep in mind. Because when you're working in, at least in Unreal Engine, your base color might have an alpha channel as well, where it might be using emissive, right? So there's different kind of setups there that you could utilize. And of course, in Unity, you have URP and HDRP, and they both have different uh, texture packing setups there as well. So there's all kinds of different ways of arranging these things. But just keep those kinds of things in mind as you're working on your projects. Uh, another super useful thing, that's just for a PBR material, um, is using grunge maps. A lot of times in Unreal Engine, you have to break things up with different types of grunge maps. And so you can bring these in just the same way. Um, but these will, of course, not be a PBR material. They'll just be utilized to create a material inside of Unreal. So if I go ahead and hook these things up, like so, you'll see that we have this really interesting uh, kind of image being created. But in the red channel, it's one grunge map. In the green channel, it's another. In the blue channel, it's like so. So uh, in a very efficient way of creating, uh, a pack texture at least, is very efficient for creating packs of grunges, but also uh, like infographics and decals and things like that that you might end up wanting to utilize as well. Uh, so just keep that in mind. There's tons of things you can pack and save um, save on performance, basically. That's the easiest way to put it. Uh, how you're going to utilize this officially is going to be dependent on the game engine and your project and how you set up your shaders, okay? But you can do all the packing here in Blender, and that's what this video was about. I just wanted to show it to you. Hopefully you learned a little bit uh, and can put this to use now. Now, just a side note, Affinity Photo, channel packing is pretty tough. It's, it's not really that great. Um, Krita, it's a little awkward. Substance Designer, I think Substance Designer and Blender are actually two of your better options. So if you want to utilize the either one of these two softwares, you certainly can. Most of you already have Blender, so obviously, you know, uh, take advantage of it over here, right? And uh, use a compositor to make things happen, basically. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll check you out in the next one.